All right, good deal, good deal. Uh, Jeremy, you want to do a quick audio test before? Sure, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing, testing. Okay, I'm just going to turn down my volume just a little bit. Tell me when that's about good there. Is that all right? All right, okay. very cool, very cool. So, um, all right, everyone. Well, we appreciate you guys being here. It is uh, just now uh, 4.30 Eastern, so we'll uh, go ahead and kind of get things kicked off. But uh, we've got a great speaker lined up for today. We had Jeremy last month, a very popular session. He's actually written several uh, several articles. You know, Jeremy of sharkindicators.com is one of our contributors at Trading Pub, and he started a series that has been very popular called Building a Trading System. And so I want to give you guys this link to review after the presentation. But that uh, if you save that link in your browser, we've got part one and part two uh, in there as well that you can um, look at all three parts of it. But it's really, really a good content piece where he goes through several of the different steps, several different things to look at as far as building your own trading system. And so I think that um, the markets have, you know, several years ago, basically, uh, you know, the electronic trading took over. You saw all the volume go from uh, the floor to the machines, and I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon. But one of the cool things is that with technology, that uh, basically the technology that used to only be available to more of the institutional type traders or traders with deep pockets and rooms of servers, um, that technology has now become available to individual traders and that's really something that Jeremy's worked towards and so we're thankful to have him as a part of um, as one of the trading pub contributors and educators and so Jeremy I really appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to share some of this education just to kind of give you guys an idea we are going to be recording so uh, we'll get a copy of this recording out to you uh, we'll get it posted on our website hopefully tomorrow and email it out to you as well I know lots of people like to view the recordings again. So, uh, Jeremy, at this time, I know they all these people came to uh, hear you speak. Uh, if we could, real quick, it's always fun to kind of see where everybody's tuning in from. If you could type, uh, type in where you're joining us from. Again, just type in where you're tuning in from today. Looks like uh, we've got the Netherlands uh, wins the award for being the first one to type in. Spain, Dallas, Canada, Rhode Island, Arizona. All right, good deal, good deal. Uh, looks like we've got a very, uh, very diverse crowd from everywhere from Atlanta, Georgia to Portugal. So, uh, Jeremy, at this time, I will turn things over to you and you can take it away. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Morgan. It's always a pleasure to be uh, on Trading Pub. Uh, I'm just going to start my desktop here. And uh, while that's going, um, let me make sure I've got the right monitor here. All right. Okay, so today's topic is going to be about building your own trade system. Um, you know, when we uh, started this business, it's sort of we we decided to take a, a completely different tack than I guess a lot of other vendors and and whatnot that's out there in terms of being building um, an off-the-shelf type system where you can just download and it gives you buy and sell signals and and uh, and then you go in and and make trades. Because um, what we saw was that uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, that traders tend to not just stick, successful traders I should say, that we observed, uh, tend to not just stick with one system and they tend to evolve it over time. They tend to um, also trade systems that are very personal to themselves um, because uh, the, the, the risk characteristics and, and the trading styles you know, of, of, the, of the trader, um, basically the system has to match that, those person, the personality of the trader for it to be successful. Um, so um, what we built is not a tool, it is not a like a black box system by any means. Uh, what we've built is a, tr a tool to allow you to create from scratch your own trading system using your own ideas, uh, your own trade criteria. Um, uh, basically everything is your own. There's no, everything I'm going to show you here today, you know, you'll notice the software doesn't really corner you into making any hard decisions in terms of, you know, you, you have to trade this style, you have to trade discretionarily, you have to trade all automated. No, it doesn't, it doesn't do any of those things. It, it, it basically, it's an open book and it allows you to do a lot of different things. Um, uh, it allows you to, to trade the way you like to trade is, is basically what we try to do. 
Okay, so um, <clears throat> before we kind of go on, and I want to I want to dive into a little bit of the you know behind the 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 philosophy of, of how we build the software and and when we were first starting out, you know, we, we studied a lot of different professional traders and figured out try to figure out what what made them successful versus uh, you know the uh, I guess you could say the ninety percent club. I'm sure you've heard that figure many times um, of retail traders that uh, that try but don't succeed. You know, it is a tough business for sure. So you know, obviously we're very interested in seeing why why do the professionals make it and 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 why do others not. Um, one of the things we different, definitely noticed is it, there really is no secret out there. It's just a matter of, of a lot of hard work, as you'll see, um, and, and a lot of hard work that we try to uh, make easier using with our tool. Um, so first things first is professional traders, you know, they, they do all their work uh, when the markets are closed. They study the charts, they look at the indicators, and they're constantly finding ways to, to to interpret the indicators to get good entries and good 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 exits, so um, it's just basically you know that's really all there is to it. Uh, a lot of work being put into the research phase uh, long before the the markets they actually trade real live money in the markets. Um, of course, professionals are also uh, very good at controlling their emotions when they actually trade, and as we'll see in a, in a moment, um, you know how our software helps you. Uh, 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 mitigate the emotional uh, uh, side of the trading trading business, which of course you can't exactly. There's no such thing as being able to eliminate emotions, even if you design your own automated trading system with your own uh, criteria and everything. You know, you still got to hit the on button to uh, to to let it go. Um, and certainly, if you're very emotional, uh, you know, you can very easily just interfere with that process, even if you've done all the research and pre-planned and, 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 and have all the numbers in place and, and, you, and you've got a system you believe works, um, it's very easy to screw it up um, simply by just interfering when, when you, with your trade plan when you shouldn't have. Um, so like I said, it's like there is no secret to being a professional trader. It's really just a lot of pounding the pavement and a lot of hard work. Um, but there's one thing for sure the professionals do and, and that's they don't just trade kind of off the cuff. They don't just fire off uh, random trades here and there when they feel their gut tells them to. Um, you know, even if it appears that they do, uh, they've done a lot of research, and and they've um, they've got a system and they've got a methodology. Um, so when I say trade system, like like how many of you guys, I guess, um, are, are not aware of what a, a trade system is? So basically, a trade system is you know it's it's a set of rules and a set of criteria that that you use to um, uh, to to govern your entries. Um, and when you've developed something like this, and you've actually practiced enough times, and you've and you've done the research, it gets a lot easier to actually pull the, pull the trigger and actually do the trades. Uh, because at that point, at the point where you've pulled the trade, you you know done when you're doing the trade itself, you've done all the hard work already, and you already know that what if you follow your system uh, to a T and you follow your criteria that the odds are in your favor and you're going to be successful in coming out. So the big question is for a lot of these retail traders like you know yourselves or, or, or whoever that's maybe starting out is how do you know your trade ideas or the system that you developed or the system maybe you're adopting from a mentor or maybe you're you're looking and you're, you've got a, you're, you're training uh, a system, um, to learn a, to trade a system from a coach. You know how do you know if it really works? Um, well, the thing is, you have to actually um, be able to model your system in the computer to be able to visualize it and eventually to to to, to back test it. Um, I guess you know you could argue you could you could you could create your system, have it written down on pieces of paper, and and uh, go back and manually track each trade you know historically to see if, if it would have been profitable um, but of course you and I know that's that takes a tremendous amount of time um, especially if you're iterating over many many different systems uh, and you're changing your system constantly that that time could add up really fast and really quickly which is just really unnecessary work um, and of course there's with our day and age of computers there's there's, there's an automated way to do this um, so the first step is you've actually got to model your system in the computer your trade system and at this point, once your your computer knows how to 
trade the way you want to trade, you can tell it to go off and, and do the back testing and and and, um, uh, and 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 get you the results and get you the historical performance that it would have gotten uh, had you have uh, traded your system uh, exactly how you described it. Um, you know, also modeling the system allows you to trade very efficiently in terms of if it, if the computer knows how to trade it, then by extension you can actually trade it automated as well. So. How do you model your 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 system in 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 the computer? Um, you know, before we came along, basically it was you had to code it, uh, or you had to hire a programmer to to uh, to do it yourself to to describe it in the computer. And of course, that's a pretty tall order. That's a that's a big barrier. You know, if you're learning how to trade, and you want to learn how to code at the same time, you know, it's those are two very huge obstacles to overcome. Um, you know, if you're one of the very few that that actually are developers to begin with, uh, obviously that's you know that that piece is 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 solved. But but even even so, you know, the time involved in actually modeling your system using computer code, um, it, it's a it takes a tremendous amount of trial and effort and a lot of time. Um, you know, and this is basically where we come in, as we built this system called Bloodhound, and it allows you to uh, build your trade systems. Uh, without having to code, um, so for many this is this is a a capability that uh, uh, e even if you were you, you know for for those of you that don't know how to code or don't have any interest in learning how to code, um, you know this opens up some some really big doors for you. So with Bloodhound, um, we sort of you know we want to change the landscape of retail trading. We want to give the retail trader the power to be able to model the trade systems. Uh, back test and do the research that professionals do, um, except a lot quicker. Um, and then, uh, on top of that, uh, allow people to to auto trade their systems if they so desire, and do this all without having to actually touch a line of code. So, if you are a developer and you're in this listening listening to me, you might be wondering, well, you know, well, if I know how to code already, why would I, you know, be interested in something like this? But uh, um, uh, quite a few of our uh, quite a few of our customers are developers themselves, and we find that the not only do they they pick up on this stuff pretty quickly, but um, you know they can integrate you know their own logic and and customize it, extend the, the capability even further. But it's just it comes down to raw speed. Um, as you're going to see in a minute, we we're we're able to um, uh, model and and create a, a trade system within just a few mouse clicks. And uh, I'll show you how kind of how easy that is. So, <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to show you just here a little, little bit of demo on um, on building a very simple system. Um, you know, when we talk about moving, like when we're talking about uh, learning how to trade, generally speaking, uh, you know, the first uh, first thing you'll you'll come across is is something like a moving average crossover system. And this is just a simple. You know, I, I would say it's probably more of a learning tool than anything else. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of systems that do use moving average crossovers um, as maybe part of a filter or just a little piece of uh, to to a greater puzzle. Um, but this is sort of uh, uh, very easy to graph and and it's something uh, that we can show right you know without too much explanation. But but the gist of it is, imagine you got two indicators in your chart, and sort of I apologize if I'm sort of insulting the intelligence of some of you guys that have been doing this for a while, but uh, just for the benefit of everybody, just to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page here, um, I'm just going to go off and, and talk about you know what the moving average crossover is, and 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 basically is imagine you've got these two these two indicators. So I've got this orange one here and this blue one. It's sort of a, what we call a slow moving average, and these are all just based off the price. Um, but but basically, you know, you could have a, a signal generated so that uh, that you want to go into the market on a long position when this. Um, when this uh, orange line crosses above the blue, and vice versa, a short position when this blue this this orange line crosses below the, the blue. So let me show you really quick how we can model that uh, in in Bloodhound. So in the back here, I've got my my charts here, and I'm just gonna get rid of that one there. And uh, I, by the way, guys, I just I've just got a simulated data going on, and you know, I I, I what we're gonna build here today is just gonna I'm gonna show you. How to build some components that you might desire to to be included in your system that you're, um, you know. But by no means am I going to be building a say a quote unquote tradable or workable system. You know, I'm just I'm sort of just demoing this uh, at the capabilities of the software and, and how you can build your own uh, based off what you see here. Okay, so I've got a chart here. I've got a a fast moving average in white. 
which is a moving average, uh, simple moving average with a period of 10. And I've got a slower moving average of a period of 30. And basically, this is NinjaTrader here. So our software runs on NinjaTrader. And its, um, its main component is actually an indicator. But as you'll see, it's, uh, it's an indicator that um, allows you to model other indicators and other trade systems. So it's, it's more than an indicator, I would say. Um, but here it is. I'm just going to put on the chart. And so the, the, the output sort of just appears in the, just below it. And I'm just going to put in a moving average crossover, like so. Set the first moving average to 10. And the second one to 30. And you'll see that Bloodhounds immediately just updated the chart in the back there with some discrete buy and sell signals. So you can see a couple of them right now. You can see there's a short signal here. There's a long signal here, a long one there, a short one there. And these correspond exactly when the uh, crossover occurs. So you can see this bar here, that's, that's exactly when the, uh, the moving average cross, sorry, the, uh, the 10 has just crossed above the 30. This is when the 10 has just crossed below the 30. So I'm just going to mark that up. And Zach sort of gave me these new little my partner, Mrs. Partner, just sh showed me how to put these little drawing tools on the chart. So I'm just going to be using these throughout the presentation. Um, but if I look like I'm clutching around, then it's because it's the first time I've sort of uh, played around with them. But uh, you can see here I've got, I've just circled this bar here, which is where, where that crossover appeared. So um, so basically, yeah, I just showed you in, in uh, fairly quickly how I could just put a crossover there. Um, but of course, um, any of you guys that have been around the block uh, a few times will know that uh, uh, crossover systems by themselves um, tend to fall flat on their face, um, and you need other things like filters and 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 and, and more components to your system uh, to make it work. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a separate criteria, and I'm going to require that they both agree uh, before we uh, we we have an actual signal. Okay, so let's move on to the next piece here. Okay. Um, a very kind of popular way to look at the uh, the market is to is to break it down into what we call price swings, and um, uh, you probably heard the old uh, axiom: well, you know, you know, trend is your friend um, uh, until the end. Uh, the whole idea there is you want to stick with the trend. You know, if you want to fight the market, you want to ride it like a wave, and and you want to stay with it. So the uh, the whole point is: okay, what is the trend then? Well, there's many ways to define a trend. Diff traders have all sorts of different ways to define trend. Um, one fairly popular way to define trend is to look at the what we call the price swing action here. And as you look at just, just below here, we've got this um, we got these little zigzags here and they just represent sort of the abstraction of price movement. And you can see there's HHs here, HLs, and these stand for higher lows and higher highs. Okay, so what's going on here is in this market you know, you you got this. Um, what's this is a double bottom, but you're getting this this little kind of local low, if you will, and it's higher. This low is higher than the low just just over here. Okay. Similarly, this low up here is higher than this low down here. So we're calling this higher lows. And similarly, these highs, you know, they they keep on. They're they're higher as well. So they're just kind of inching up. So this is what we call an uptrend um, by this definition. And similarly, on the downside, you know, we get in these lower lows here, lower highs, and uh, that's a great way as well to identify a downtrend. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, how we can model that as well on Bloodhound. And again, I'm just showing you little pieces here, and there's quite a few pieces uh, to Bloodhound in terms of this. There's a lot of different things you can you can look at, um, but uh, but I'm just going to give you sort of sort of touch the surface here and, and give you a taste of what's uh, what's possible. Okay, so we've got the swing in with Bloodhound as well. And I'm just going to put this on the chart um, uh, just for illustrative purposes. So Bloodhound, once once you've got Bloodhound, you, you technically don't need any other indicator, but it's nice to sort of see it on the chart as well while you're building it, just to, just to make it a little easier in the building phase. Okay, so as you can see, I've, it, all the, uh, the price swings are, are marked here. Got these nice up and down zigzags, and you can see there's a couple of them that are like marked as higher highs, higher lows. You know, this year is a very gradual, but it's definitely an uptrend. 
okay, because you're getting these higher higher shelves here and higher peaks. And um, you know, we go back here. This is kind of a choppy area here. Um, and I'm on a two minute chart. It uh, looks like we got another uptrend here. So let's let's go in and, and mark this over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable that first one that we just put together. You notice how like immediately my 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 chart sort of clears back to zero. All right, now I'm going to add the swing trend. And um, <clears throat> so pretty much as soon as I just add that, Bloodhound has now marked the chart um, with historically what you would have seen in terms of an uptrend or a, a, a downtrend. So what I mean by that is, you know, things are ob pretty obvious in hindsight, but you see we get these little kind of clear zones here, right? You're wondering, well, you know, that was obviously in an uptrend. Well, the thing is, you don't actually know that's an uptrend until some of the other bars form, right? So imagine you know, this is the, the most right side bar here, right? And we're just going along. You know, this is ambiguous because we don't really know, you know, what, what's going to happen. Uh, it could be an uptrend, but if it turns back down, um, you know, that's, it's basically ambiguous until we get basically a higher high. Once this higher high forms, and we don't know, actually know that's a higher high until this bar actually comes in, you know, until actually until this bar, um, because just the sensitivity setting we've, we've, we've applied to our indicator, um, that's, that's when you get the, uh, uh, the next uh, sort of green zone here. And now you can see that uh, we've correctly done sort of the green zone or the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, bullish trend, okay? So a simple matter of just if we want to just combine these two indicators so that they actually um, they have actually only give you signals when they agree, then it's just a simple matter of putting them both on at the same time. And to do that with Bloodhound, I just click that on like so. And now you'll see that all the crossover points that agree with the swing trend are now shown. All right, so we had one over here, but you can see, you know, um, if I if I just put the swing trend back in, you can see this 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 crossover occurred when the swing trend was ambiguous, and so therefore no signal actually occurred, right? So these are we're showing now signals where both the swing trend and the crossover agree with each other. Those where they the two criteria actually match. So in, and you can see how you can quickly put a lot of little building blocks together, a lot of different components, and you can you can come up with pretty complex criteria and get them all to match, um, uh, and uh, before you actually have a, a valid signal generated. So in fact, if you if you follow just about any expert trader out there, um, you know even if they've got sort of their own software and their own systems, they generally will will um, also teach as a layer on top of that, like filters, and say things like, okay, well, yeah, I mean, the software generated a buy here, but, um, you know, don't take the buy unless your bar is below this this line here, or above this line here, the close is here, here, you know, like, there's always some sort of, you know, additional filters that they want you to put in, and a lot, of, a lot of times these filters are actually, you know, they change over time, and they, they evolve over time. Um, so Bloodhound is a great tool to be able to model these and 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 very quickly, you know, you know, you're basically you're, you're major. Imagine you're in the heat of battle, you know, the, the prices are streaming in, you know, it's very tough tough unless you've done it uh, uh, enough times um, to check, you know, five or six different criteria, especially if you're doing it on different time frames um, uh, before you get a, you know, uh, before you, you you you're confident that you've got a, a valid signal, and uh, and so Bloodhound sort of keeps all that stuff objective and keeps your criteria and just prints out pretty much what you tell it to print out. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, I'm going to sort of put in one more piece here uh, just to show you that, uh, that you know, amongst the many things that you can sort of analyze, that uh, you, can, you can actually get, you can actually read the slope of certain indicators as well. Okay, so um, a very popular uh, uh, indicator, obviously, the stochastic. Um, and analyzing this sort of oscillator and when it's going down and when it's going up is a great way as well to find out sort of the swing of things in terms of when, when the you know which way the price is uh, likely to head. So you can see here, um, you know, we just I just have a stochastic slope there, and, and you can see I've just got a configure here. So Bloodhound, you know, marks me red when when the slope is down, and marks me green when the slope is up. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's apply this to our little our little system here. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another aspect of of Bloodhound, which is very exciting, I find. Um, and this is kind of where you can really uh, play around and get and put a lot of power into your system, into your logic of your system. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to pull in those two existing like the crossover condition that we had before and a swing trend condition that we had before. So, but all I have to do is just sort of connect that to the result node like this, and you can see that um, now it's now just reading in the uh, the crossovers here. If I plug in the, uh, the swing trend, I've now got uh, the swing trend plugged into my output. So that's that's what I'll be seeing here. Okay, and um, if I want to sort of mimic what we had before. I'm just going to plug them into an AND node, which basically tells you, all right, I want both this um, this uh, a criteria and that criteria to to agree with each other before I print a signal. And you can see how how that now just reflect is reflected on the chart. So we're we're back to where we started again. We have these signals that are showing we're, we're both of the uh, we're we're both of them actually agree with each other. Okay, so let's add the stochastic. All right, so the stochastic I've got actually down here already, and you can see it's just nicely oscillating up and down here. And I want to analyze the slope of the stochastic, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and put in an indicator slope in here. And I'm going to go in here, just change this, this to, to the stochastic, like so. And we're looking at the stochastic D now. If, if you're if you're pretty sharp with the stochastic, you'll notice that there actually is two plots to the stochastic. There's the stochastic, the stochastic D and the stochastic K. Um, so we've selected the D. That's the one we want to analyze. Um, you can do all sorts of things. So you can look at crossovers between D and K, or you can look at the uh, um, you know, K alone or whatever. Um, and so let's just make sure that we've got the same uh, parameters. Seven fourteen three, I believe that was. Uh, I believe that was what we had there. But if you wanted to change that, you could certainly change that if you like. Um, and so let's plug that in. All right. So now you see that we've got these um, these moments here where uh, and every time the, the stochastic is going up, we got this nice green section. Every time it's going down, we got this this red section. Okay. Let's pretend though um, we want to relax the criteria just a little bit, and we want to go. All right. I want to take trades with a crossover if the swing trend agrees with it or the stochastic slope agrees with it. I don't care which one, just as long as the one, the one agrees with it. Well, that's just a simple OR node. So I'm going to put those in together and tie them together with an OR node, like so. Right. So this is saying, all right, either the, let me just get rid of this, uh, this one X over here. Pardon me. Either the the uh, the trend or the or the uh, stochastic slope have to have to agree with the, the crossover, All right? So let's put that there like that. Okay, and then I'm going to plug this into the AND node, and then I'm going to plug this into the result. Okay, so so now we've got all the trades that uh, all the all the signals where the crossover occurs. And the swing trend or the stochastic slope agree with it. So as you can see, it's it's fairly simple to just complex. And and the nice thing about it is you can sort of take it little piece by piece. You know, once you've got one building block set, you know, you study the charts, make sure that's that's what you want. Then you go off and you you can build the second, um, you know, build another piece in, and then you can build it all. Then you put it all together. And um, and and voila, you've got a basically a tradable or not tradable, but a system that you can back test and you can test if it's tradable, right? At this point, now you can do the analysis and now you can do the the. Uh, in fact, you can even auto trade it. Okay, so in fact, um, that's I'd like to sort of show that next to see uh, just so you can see how that would work. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, I've got a simulated data running in the background there, and um, just in the interest of time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly get rid of this this uh, bloodhound uh, indicator here, and I'm going to construct a super simple system with just a super fast, um, you know, just just generate. I just want to generate some signals so that we can show you um, what it looks like uh, uh, when you when you auto trade with, with bloodhounds. So so basically, step two. Now we've now we've um, you know we've 
learn how to model the system, uh, it'd be quite nice to actually see what it looked like if we could auto trade it as well. Okay, so this is again, this would be you say your system that you designed and you're putting together. And so I've got a very fast moving crossover now, and we should get a lot of signals from this. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, um, uh, I, instead of basically putting on Bloodhound, what we do is now put on Raven, which is basically the strategy component of Bloodhound. And this will enable us to actually put real positions on. Okay, so I'm going to build one really fast here, just a trivial system, and it's just going to be the crossover again, but this time I'm going to use the 2 and the 10. All right. All right, and we got to save it this time. Let's go 210. Okay. And um, uh, now we can go in there and sort of just specify, you know, how we're going to manage the trades. And I want to show you something really cool. This is the um, the Ninja Trader, what we call the ATM or Auto Tr Automated Trade Management. Um, those of you that are actually familiar with this uh, will really appreciate this. Now, the ATM is, is great because it actually allows you some flexibility in terms of the, the, uh, the, trade, the, the trade will be placed automatically, but uh, you can go in and you can intervene and you can actually modify the stops and t profit targets um, basically in real time. Okay. Okay, so let's go in and we got to basically we got to wait for the signal to occur so we unfortunately just missed one and i'm going to force the uh next trade to come down here but this actually we're on a two minute chart so this is going to be two minutes per bar so i'm going to speed this up a little bit just again just to just to get some action going here right 30 second bars all right let's go let's go 15 second bars we'll get lots of get lots of action this way okay all right, so let's uh, let's pipe that one down and try to coax this green line to come into the uh, to the white line there. And uh, actually, while that's happening, I'm just going to go check to see if there's any outstanding questions. Yeah, let me just uh, clean that chart up. But we're we're pretty close to signal actually. Fourth order still. Okay, so as you can see, the, the automated trade just went in while I was taking a sip of my drink there. And, uh, and, and now the, uh, the trade's placed. So this, this ATM I, I designed to, to put basically a tight stop, quote unquote tight, tight of, of basically three positions above and below the, uh, the entry point uh, of about 10 ticks each. And then one runner with a much wider stop over here. So, TM is I can go in and if I so please I can go in and, and basically just update my my stops real time. And so this um, this is a kind of a great way to if you're if you prefer to trade sort of semi-automated if you will um, to have Bloodhound uh, do the entries and then um, and then take it from there in terms of being able to. Uh, 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 Manage the manage the trade and uh, in basically in real time uh, using using a, ma a more manual method, if you will. Okay, so um, so Judy's asking, uh, you know, is this do I need Ninja Trader? And um, uh, yeah, so this this particular our system is all built on Ninja Trader. Um, you know, just uh, from a, uh, a, the standpoint of the Trader being the most open platform uh, out there, we're, we're able to develop a, a system that can work with an Trader like this. Um, uh, you know, we don't have any concrete plans to port to any other uh, systems at the moment, um, but that's certainly not out of the question. Um, but at the moment, it is an Trader, yeah. Um, Okay, uh, TJ, can you follow uh, multiple time frames at once? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so with Bloodhound, uh, and that's a, that's a great question, actually, TJ. TJ, and that's uh, many traders that we found actually um, really like to look at multiple charts simultaneously. So you have the same instrument, um, you know, maybe to get like a bird eye bird eye view of the uh, you know a larger time frame. 
And to do that in Bloodhound, it's just a simple matter of hitting this chart button like so. Target filled. Okay, so there's the there's the first target that uh, uh, was hit, and and uh, uh, you can see that my runner stop here is way down here, so it'll be a while before it gets there. Now I'm actually modifying this. Um, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I'm modifying the system as it's in inside of a trade, uh, and while it's running. Um, so Bloodhound actually will let you do this. Um, you know, but uh, obviously that's uh, you know that's that's probably not the smartest thing to do. Um, but nonetheless, you can if you really feel like it. Uh, but but say for example, if I want to put a 15-minute chart in like that, I can do so. And then pretty, pretty much any of these little solver guys that we put in there before uh, to analyze different aspects of the chart um, can also be placed um, under this 15-minute time time frame. So so you can basically import, if you will, data from from a, a larger time frame and and uh, and have that all read in nicely into one chart and incorporate it to your signal structure. Uh, James is asking, with the new very short 50 second signals, is my assumption that it must be designed for scalping rather than swing trading? Um, so, so James, if you if you're just coming in, maybe um, what I'm getting at is is this, um, you know, there, we don't. Th this is a system modeler that allows you to build any kind of system you'd like. So, if you do want to trade on a 15 second chart, you can. Um, if you want to trade on a five. I mean, it's just, it's really up to your you know what your your trading preference is, and again, Bloodhound is like an open book. It's like a it's like a, a um, the ability to to you can you can describe your trade system um, without actually uh, <clears throat> without actually having to code, and it doesn't force you to trade in any particular way. So if you like trade, if you like to swing trade, if you like to trade daily charts, even it really doesn't matter. Uh, Ender is saying, oh, hey, Ender Wigan, <laughs> I just finished reading um, uh, Orson, uh, is it Orson, I can't remember the name of the author, uh, Ender's Game, yeah, great, great, uh, great novel, actually, the, here there's a movie coming out of that pretty soon, which I can to see, um, but yeah, so uh, Lightspeed, I'm not sure if NinjaTrader actually has support for Lightspeed, that, uh, um, that I think was something that uh, NinjaTrader was looking into. Um, Wim Router is asking, RSI is great support. When would you use MACD, please? What's the difference? In, what's the difference in putting both to your use? Thank you. Well, um, you can certainly uh, uh, actually let me just let me just shut this down for a second here. You can certainly incorporate the MACD or the uh, or the uh, RSI if you'd like. Um, you know, the RSI is a uh, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, I I'm not super familiar with with the you know the best uses of the RSI. Um, I, let, actually, let me just throw one on there just to take a quick look at it. You know, but certainly if you like to use the RSI or the MACD, you can without having to. Uh, you can certainly you can certainly add that into your system. Um, one thing I want to note is is a lot of uh, traders that we found. Um, also like to look at what we call the basically the change in slope of certain indicators. Okay, so um, actually the stochastic was a favorite one, and so the RSI is kind of similar to that. But if you look at the stochastic, it's, it, you know, being an oscillator. Um, all right, so this is going to be a little confusing here. So let me just change the properties here. Oops, wrong button. And let me just make the R, um, the stochastic a little thicker, nice and thick. That uh, that green line down there. Okay, so it's very hard to see with the human eye, but you know, obviously, when when this when this guy is starting to change direction, you know, some some some, some traders actually like to see that, you know, and the RSI being sort of a rate. Uh, I might be mistaken, but it's basically a rate of change uh, calculator. If I'm if I if I remember correctly, um, well, you can sort of you can either use the RSI directly into say a system and and, and may maybe say measure its its uh, its its value against some other value. Um, but uh, another cool little way to 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 look at oscillation is to see where you know which way the uh, the acceleration, if you will, if the if the indicator is going. So. I want to go ahead and say, uh, look at the change in slope of a particular indicator. I can add the change in slope there. 
and I'm going to put in the stochastic again. That's just, I, you know, just first thing that came to mind. It doesn't really matter. I mean, as you can see, like pretty much any indicator on my system, I can I can analyze. It doesn't matter what. And this this goes for any indicator that I may maybe download from the internet or or maybe design myself. Um, but basically, once I put that on, all right, and it's a little distracting that we got the RSI there, so let me just get rid of that for a second. You can see how um, you can see how you know, when when that indicator starts to keel over a little bit, you know, actually, actually, even if I just go right back, you know, let's just move forward a little bit. But you see this little uh, in a kind of inflection point here, right? right? Oops, where's my? There we are. So kind of in this area here, when that when that stochastic is, it went from positive and it's starting to change, starting to change to go negative, you know, um, you see how Bloodhound is sort of caught on to that and and early and giving this kind of early warning signal here. Um, you know, even before it has actually gone negative. Okay, so in fact, in fact, it's still technically positive. You know, pretty flat, but still technically positive. But but you can see that Bloodhound's already saying, "Hey, this thing is turning over." Um, you know, get ready because it. You know, there could be an oscillation going down here, and uh, so that's that's a great little thing you can add there if you if you want to analyze say the change in slope or something. Uh, the MACD. That's a great question as well. Um, so. Common use of the MACD, all right. So, is to um, let's just throw the MACD on there first, and I'll, I'll uh, explain. But a very common use of the MACD. Okay, no, that's pretty unclear looking. So let me just thicken those bars a bit again. All right. So let's go to five there, and let's make this a nice light blue like so. There we go. Okay. So the MACD is basically two moving averages, and what the, what the MACD measures is basically the divergence of the convert. That's it stands for moving average convergence divergence, which basically in English means, you know, um, you know, what is the difference between these two moving averages? Essentially, um, you know, it's is it, is is it is it is it is the differences increasing or is the differences decreasing, right? And um, and that's sort of plotted with this histogram here, uh, which is known as a, maybe the MACD diff um, or the histogram. You can call it either way. But uh, some people use it as like a kind of a momentum indicator, and you're able to see, you know, is is the is the momentum going up or momentum going down, and and you can you can determine that by seeing how it how it, um, you know how it's uh, in relation to the zero line here. So it's generally been said, you know, that if if the uh, MACD's histogram is below zero, you got sort of negative momentum happening. And if you got a, a Mac, the MACD diff above zero, you got sort of positive momentum happening. So to, to um, model that in Bloodhound is also pretty simple. Um, we just go in and, and use basically what we call a, a threshold, because we're going to be measuring the, the MACD's diff histogram against zero. I can pop that in like so. And we, we were looking at as the MACD, you know, it has three lines there. It's got the histogram, it's got the, the MACD and the average. We were interested in the plot in this case, and uh, and now we just want to, um, you know, if we have a positive, um, uh, a positive, uh, sorry, if, if the if the histogram is above zero, we want the the long side to be to be nice and you know to go one, and if we want the 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 um, to measure below zero, we just have the uh, uh, the short side go one uh, when it's below zero. So this this is basically mirroring the the MACD. As you can see, you know, every time we get these green zones, every time the MACD is above zero, and every time it's below zero. So now, now you can take this piece and you can layer it into other, t um, say, other criteria that you may have. Okay, thanks, Orson Scott Card. That's the name of the author. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, do you have the tools to build in candlestick patterns? So, with NinjaTrader, there's actually a candlestick, um, a candlestick indicator, and it's just a simple matter of hooking those two up together. So I can go in here and actually I'll just use the same threshold, um, but there's a candlestick pattern right here, and basically the candlestick pattern it's 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 like a computer output. Uh, it outputs a, I think a one uh, if if what if the candlestick that you you're looking for is seen, otherwise it's zero. And so you can see I got a drop down here for the different candlestick patterns that I can use. And actually just let's just put this on the um,
and uh, let's let's have it mark the uh, morning stars. So I'll let that chew there for a bit. All right, now let's see. Let's go back on our chart and see if we got any yet. And I don't see where it is, so I don't see anything. But let's try another one. All right, I know what a doji is, so let's try that. <laughs> okay, there we go. So <laughs> it's uh, seeing seeing a lot of dojis there. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's get Bloodhound to sort of uh, pick those out. And so I'm just going to go in and. Uh, Put in the candlestick pattern. Put the doji in there. Okay. And as you can see, it's sort of just mimicked and it's marked the same thing. Um, in fact, what we want to do actually is uh, set this output to one. So we get basically a dual lines there. Okay. It won't, it won't show there, but uh, uh, you can see, you notice how every time, every time there's a, a doji, Bloodhound's giving you this uh, nice kind of green and red bar at the same time, right? And in fact, maybe just just to illustrate that point a little bit further, I'm just going to change the quick setting there, and this will this will paint the. Okay, so there you can see CCI divergence and crosses. Yeah, so so raw. Um, as I sort of mentioned before, like it doesn't really matter what indicators you like to use. Um, pretty much any of them will, will work with the system. So if uh, if you want to if you want to look at uh, okay well, divergence, I should I should sort that, that's a sort of an aside topic. Divergence is something we are working on as a separate product. Um, but in terms of crosses, not not a big deal. So if we want to look at the crosses uh, of the CCI, um, <clears throat> and you have to forgive me, I'm not actually familiar with the CCI very much. Um, and you know where where do you want to cross that over with? Um, but you could certainly just, um, you know, choose that as one of your indicators to test against. And uh, like, so let's just take a look at the CCI. Okay, so the CCI looks like it's a. Um, I, I presume, uh, Raul, you probably want to you want to look at the uh, the CCI against maybe certain threshold levels, and that's fairly simple to do as well. So so um, you know we'd put the CCI in there like so. Okay, and then. Um, Back here, uh, just put it against. Oops, put put against some sort of absolute value. You know, depending on what what you're looking at. I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. Say 80. I'm not really sure. Okay, so uh, it's not on our chart, so you know it, we won't be able to really interpret this. But 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 you can see how um, it doesn't really matter what indicator you, you might want to look at. Okay, so. Um, yeah, and so Robert, you're asking about volume. So volume is definitely possible as well because volume as well in, in NinjaTrader is just another indicator. Um, uh, what are uh, Carmen's asking, uh, or Chris is asking, can one build a system using price action alone rather than using canned indicators which, there are, which are always lagging? Um, you know, there's, always, there's so much you can do with price action, Chris. Um, and, and certainly you can, you know, um, you know, indicators are absolutely lagging for sure. That's just you know the nature of indicators. Um, but even some of the price action, uh, you know, uh, you know, say if you're looking at, um, uh, or, or for example, say you say you're looking at price action levels, maybe just higher highs and higher lows, and, and the um, you know the last high within the you know the, the last you know x number of swings. Uh, you can absolutely uh, use that information, and maybe, maybe for example, you got a system where, hey, if this, if the price just crossed above the, la you know, the the um, the last five swings, the highest high, um, you know, go long against that. So you you could absolutely do that. Um, uh, so so there there are many kind of ways to incorporate uh, price action swing or price price swing action in there, uh, as well as regression channels and other things like that. Um, uh, Carmen Ditro. Uh, Carmen's asking, "What are the moving averages called? Please define them." Um, uh, well, the the moving averages that we were using here are the uh, this, this the simple moving average, um, ten and thirty. But it, as I mentioned before, it doesn't really you know Blood, Bloodhound will will work with any kind of moving average that you'd like to use. So if you don't like the simple moving averages, go ahead and 
and use other moving averages. Um, you know, the EMA is obviously a very popular one, and and you know, if you're um, uh, if you like, you can even nest the moving average together. So, uh, how many of you guys have heard of the the triple move or the triple EMA? That's that's basically an EMA inside an EMA inside an EMA. Um, so you can actually model that as well. You can you can put an EMA in and you can nest it like so. You'll put another one in and uh, nest another EMA in there. So this is basically a triple EMA with each with a period of 14. So we're feeding in the the price the price close into an EMA into the EMA into an EMA. So um, <clears throat> you can kind of invent any kind of indicator you like. Uh, I think of Bloodhound as kind of like an indicator an indicator uh, invention tool. Um, Calvin's asking, can you do a divergence with an indicator versus price at a slow, uh, making a higher high with, yeah, so, so Calvin, as I mentioned before, divergence is actually a separate thing that we are working on. So, so currently there is a way to, I would say it's fairly difficult to fake in Bloodhound, but, uh, uh, that, that, that's also why we're, we're building a separate tool to detect divergence. Uh, TJ, could you incorporate market intervals? Market internals into your analysis, like uh, the, like the tick. Um, so in NinjaTrader, um, the tick is just basically uh, it comes in as a chart data. So absolutely, you sh you sure can. Um, and it's just a matter of 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 adding the tick to your to your to your system. And uh, in the instruments side of it, and I don't think I've got it in there, but you you would define your 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 the tick as an instrument first. So I'd go here and actually like. Um, you know, go to the instrument manager, and I, I don't think I've got the tick in here, but basically, let's just take a look and see what we do. Okay, we do have the tick index. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's a tick. Um, so you, you could most certainly just, again, okay, we might have to refresh this. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you, you could incorporate the tick like so, and then you can have, say, indicators on your tick, and, and you can incorporate it on your system. So that, that's not an issue as well. As well. Uh, Rick is asking about uh, wiki off signals. Um, uh, perfectly honest, Rick, I'm not too familiar with Wikioff, um, and I'm not even sure actually if, if NinjaTrader has Wikioff signals, but but certainly if you had another vendor and you knew that they use Wikioff signals, um, it's not much trouble to import that into uh, into Bloodhound as well. Um, let me just uh, digress a little bit and show you what I was talking about earlier about the um, with back testing. Okay, so I have a couple systems that I built, and, and you know, to be honest, I I uh, I just kind of threw them together, so I don't really know. You know, this this may be some somewhat embarrassing in terms of the uh, the performance, the back testing performance, but but nonetheless, let me just put put them together and take a look and see if uh, we get something here. Um, but this is how you go off to this is how you go off and and back test a system. Okay, so so what I in NinjaTrader, it's just a simple matter of going in and, and going file new strategy analyzer, right? So in NinjaTrader, the a system is the vernacular is strategy. And with the strategy analyzer, I can go in and I can take a Bloodhound uh, system that I've designed earlier, and and apply some you know, some stops and, and and profit targets to it. And this particular case, I'm going to elect to put a profit target and a stop loss that is based off the average true range. Okay, so that's basically a way of a, a really nice way of saying I want the the profit and stop target to be 10 average bars away from the entry price. Um, so, in other words, if you've got a very volatile market, it's just whipping up and down. So you've got these really huge bars that you're dealing with. Um, you know, chances are you're going to probably want to widen your stops a little bit. Um, you know, versus if you've got a very tight market uh, where the where the um, the average bar size is a lot smaller, you know, you'll want to uh, adjust similarly and, and use less risk. So, so one common uh, way to do that is to base the, your stop and, and your profit targets. Um, against the the average true range or the average bar size and some multiple of it. So to do that in Bloodhound, um, you just basically select the ATR as your measurement unit uh, for your profit and stop targets, and um, you know just that basically in English says you know put my profit target and stop loss about 10 average bars away from the entry price. And let's just use this on a daily. And basically once you get your your stop set and whatnot. Um, select your instrument, or you can select a basket of them, and just hit the run back test. And I'm pretty sure I've got some CL data in there, so hopefully that will turn away. But um, uh, I did 
sort of blank this computer, I guess, not too long ago, so so it may or may not be there. But anyways, while that's turning away, we'll I'll just answer more questions. But that's that's basically how you would black back test your system with Bloodhound, is using uh, basically the strategy analyzer. Okay, so okay, there you go. So there, there's the there's there's the results, and with an integrator strategy analyzer, we get a lot of great things with it. So obviously now we can see, you know, this is the profit that it would have done uh, over say the three year period. This is actually a, a little simple little system my my business partner had uh, designed, um, uh, using basically you know three very common indicators: the stochastics, the MACD, and and the moving average. And uh, so, so you can see we've got, we've got some great statistics here. It gives you the profit factor, um, the cumulative profit, the max drawdown, which is which tells you basically what is the worst you know that you had to endure in terms of um, in terms of uh, it going against you, um, and uh, percent profitable. And as you can see, this one didn't take too many trades. It's a, it's a daily trading system that was very conservative. So you know that may not be your style. You know you may maybe you decide you you, you like to to trade a lot more than that. You know that just go into your, your your system and adjust it and make more signals um, until you're happy with it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just throw let's just throw up a graph here so we can take a look at it. So this is the um, this is what the uh, the uh, the equity curve would have looked like. As you can see, there aren't too many trades there, so it's not much of a curve. It's more like like the digital uh, signals there. Um, uh, so you know, I, I would actually characterize that you know this this type of system would need a lot more testing to to uh, to see if it uh, is tradable. Um, but you get a lot of information here. So this is your maximum what they call maximum forward excursion, which which is basically saying you know how, you know how much more profit could you have made before your stops took you out. Um, uh, you know your maximum adverse excursion, which is you know how much did it go against you before you actually. Uh, before you actually became a winner uh, or loser, um, yeah. So, so there's a lot of uh, fantastic little uh, little tidbits of information that you could you you definitely would want to use when you're analyzing your system. Okay. Um, what does system recognize trade patterns like Gartley butterfly and crab? Um, Wim, I'm, I'm actually I have to be perfectly honest. I'm not too familiar with those. I, I assume those are probably uh, you know, uh, basically image recognition or a different different sh uh, price action shapes. I'm not really sure. I've, I, I see the first time I've heard of that. Um, so um, so I, I, unfortunately I can't really answer that. But I, again, I would just sort of default to saying you know if you're if you do have a third party indicator that 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 charts that stuff and can and and spits that value out, um, you know, to say an external uh, indicator or to strategy. Then, then absolutely, you could read it into Bloodhound, and and you could, uh, uh, you know, and, and you could basically build a system around it. And TJ is saying Bloodhound would eat a crab. <laughs> so Vix asking, is is it important to use real time charting to determine the best trading decisions during the trading day? Um, you know, when you're forward testing, you know, obviously you do you want to be using the most realistic situation possible. So yeah. You know, if you're if you're uh, forward testing your your trade system, which obviously you should be you should do, um, you know, definitely use your live data feed. In fact, with NinjaTrader, you can pretty much simulate everything like it was real, except without putting real positions on, by basically connecting to um, or sorry by by full simulation mode, and that will basically make the software behave as if it was the real thing using real live data, except uh, without um, Without placing real trades to your broker, so that you know it's great if you're just uh, if you're just testing stuff out. Uh, Chris is asking, are Renko and range bars compatible with Bloodhound? So yeah, absolutely. Uh, any kind of bar is is compatible, and and certainly um, if you've downloaded your own or even invented your own um, bar types, they'll work as well. So I just put that onto say a Renko chart here, and the Renko looks kind of crazy because I've been pushing the trend down but you can see basically Bloodhound will work without issue on a Renko chart um, and, and that goes that goes as well for you know if you're adding charts additionally as additional uh, criteria to your to your system you can you can add custom chart types as well you know so I've got here um, if those of you that are familiar with NinjaTrader like some of these ones like the better Renko does not, that, that does not come with NinjaTrader this is actually one I downloaded uh, from a, a trading site called Big Mike's Trading, Big Mike Trading, 
Um, you know, so so we can certainly do that, and we can add that uh, that chart type in there. Um, so it's very kind of like it's it's an open system, if you will. Uh, Robert's asking, so as long as there's an indicator, it will work. So yeah, you know, and there are exceptions, Robert. You know, the the indicator, as long as it, you know, some indicators don't actually like to share data, so they play a little bit naughty um, in terms of they just paint the chart up with some some symbols, but they, you know, they don't actually um, expose that data. Um, uh, Sometimes on purpose, you know, some vendors don't like to do that, um, you know, because they don't want people. Ironically, some they don't want people back testing their system and verifying it. Um, but uh, you know, certainly the ones that uh, that know what they're doing, you know, will, are, are like to open up their systems and let people plug in um, uh, other, uh, you know, allow people to to use their indicators into their written strategies or or you know, bloodhound. All right, so. Um, you know, that's basically you know, what I wanted to show you today is uh, what we're working on and, and uh, you know, how, how we, we built this tool kind of around you guys. Uh, you know, like, like um, I guess the, be the best analogy is, you know, you know we, we design, um, you know, if, 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 I'm sure you guys have heard of, it, say, Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop's almost synonymous with uh, desktop publishing, but, you know, we design basically the Photoshop, if you will, uh, for traders to use. And you guys are the arts, um, you know. So, so we build, you know, the we're we're the engineers that build uh, the basically the software, the the Photoshop. Um, but in terms of making it sing and making it do, um, um, you know, trading and making money out of it, uh, you know, we leave that basically, you know, and as an open book, so you can you can build your own systems and 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 uh, uh, create your own trading strategy, you know. And and we've always sort of believed that. Um, you know, uh, trading systems should be should be a very personal affair. Um, you know, like you know, when I first you know started learning trading myself, um, you know, the instructor sort of sat up there and said, "Hey, look, you know, if I had all fifty of you guys, if I gave you the exact same trade signals, I'm not even talking about trade system, but the exact same buy and sell signals, um, you know, and and I gave them to you, say for a week. At the end of the week, every single one of you will have a different." result in terms of profit and loss and you know it sounds crazy but it's true because not every single one of them you know not necessarily every single one of them would will, will follow this first of all follow the signals as they're you know to a t um, a lot of them will manage them differently but but you know emotions you know play into the game and it's because um you know you're trading someone else's system that's not your own so you're bound to to uh um, especially if you're first starting out, to get a little, get the little shaky finger and, and not actually uh, trade the uh, the trade that you're supposed to trade. Um, but you know, it's a very different story if it's your own system or if you've taken someone else's system and and you've modified it to to suit your your own risk profile. Because um, you know, if if you're if you, again if you're trying to trade someone else's system that's intended for for their personality and their trading style, um, you know, it's very tough to do because they might be able to sit through this loss. Uh, so that they can get that 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 gain later on, but you may not be able to, you know. Um, but you know, it's it, it's all again a matter of uh, designing a system that suits you as as your personality. Um, Eduardo uh, saying, I don't know uh, Ninja Trader very well. I work with MT4. There is are there any Ninja platform free to, for test for virtual account before you buy. So yes, absolutely. NinjaTrader actually, and this is one of the reasons why we did choose them, um, is actually a free product. Um, and I believe just about every feature is in, in there except for the ability to trade live with it. Um, so that's obviously a very, let me just uh, oh, let me try that again. Uh, that's obviously a very generous uh, thing they've got going. but. Um, uh, but basically, NinjaTrader, like you, you can download and and it it, it works basically uh, full fledged. Just you can't you can't connect it to a broker. Or actually, I think you can even. Um, you, you just can't place live trades. You have to be in what they call global simulation mode. And I think there's a, a few minor differences between in terms of functionality. I think I think the ATM, for example, may not be uh, enabled. Uh, but you can most certainly, um, you know, uh, without any risk. Uh, try out uh, NinjaTrader and and, therefore, and as well our software, which runs on top of it, um, without spending. You know, there's, you know, we do have uh, a a very flexible trial policy as well. So I mean, you can go in and you can try out your 
uh, try out Bloodhound and, and uh, without any cost. Um, and in fact, we don't even have a time limit on it. So we so we've elected to sort of let people try as long as they they want to need to try it to, to learn how to use the software. Um, but we've disabled certain features, obviously, um, you know, just to um, just just to encourage it's, uh, you know some people to buy. <laughs> when you want to you know get into some serious system building, um, you, you know you'll find that uh, that um, uh, you have to move beyond the trial the, the, the trial product. Okay, so Elijah is saying Thinkorswim lets you use indicators and candles to produce trade signals. How is your software different? Uh, can you compare and con contrast? So I'm only vaguely um, um, aware of Thinkorswim's system. I think I think they actually used to. Um, uh, I, I think they they you know they. Um, uh, you know, well, let's see. The last time I used Thinkorswim actually was 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 when I was doing options trading. So um, I'm I'm unfortunately going to be kind of um, speculative on this because I don't know Thinkorswim's platform, uh, the recent changes that they've made. Um, but uh, um, you know, you know, again, we we offer basically the ability to uh, uh, to do everything in real time. So you, as you saw, we can build the system, and and because it's built on top of NinjaTrader, it's got all the analysis tools built in that you can you can analyze and back test with. Um, like I don't think there's any, you know, you know uh, uh, pretty much on top of that when it comes to when it comes to creating um, or when it comes to analyzing your 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 or back testing systems and and getting the data that you need uh, to see if your system is tradable. Um, as you saw that you can you can also automate your 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 system as well, um, you know, and and uh, uh, we have some pretty advanced. And custom logic that you can put into your system. That uh, literally, this these are all our own. Um, but you know, when when you get really advanced, and you start you, you start to learn our system a little bit more. Um, you know, we we have these function nodes as well that can do some sort of advanced things. You can create basically what's called a, a full blown state machine. Um, you know, you pretty much have all the power that a programmer would have at their fingertips. Um, uh, you know, being able to. Um, uh, to to look back and analyze previous signals, uh, um, you know, it just it, you know we can you can build some fairly complex lang uh, constructs of logic, um, and on top of that, you know, you could you you can build multiple um, different logic templates and and trade trade with them simultaneously. So for example, you know, say if I've got one called um, you know choppy market, you know, I built my conditions here, and then and then say I've got another one called um, you know trending market. You know, and you build your conditions here. So this, you know, I'm just going to throw something random there. So you know, you know, don't be alarmed if whatever I put in here doesn't really make sense. I just want to show you that that you can certainly build different, um, you know, um, different types of uh, uh, trades, different type types of trade scenarios, which you can switch to, switch on, uh, switch between on the fly. Okay, so for example, and because I probably didn't really pay attention here and, and built something that doesn't make sense, but um, you know, if I wanted to, uh, you know, build some, you know, build maybe your your trading rules for choppy markets, um, I would put that in there, and I would draw the choppy market, which you know, I guess ironically, in a choppy market, you probably don't even want to be trading at all, but you know, maybe you've got a strategy that that, that seems to work well in it. Um, you know, on on the fly, I can switch to another one. You know, so there's a lot of, I guess, real time flexibility that we offer, um, and, and so. You know, certainly our users have expressed a, a lot of uh, gratitude in terms of that, that ability. So the, it's a huge time-saving device, but also something that you can use uh, if you're very quick on your trigger. You know, something you can use uh, in, in a in a very fast market and and be very very be very effective with. Um, uh, Ninja is a free demo. Okay, so okay, so I guess that's pretty much the end of the uh, you know the questions there. And uh, let me just uh, bring up my my. Um, my sort of uh, summary here. So today, you know, what we did was I, I basically showed you how I can you can model a system from scratch um, with virtually any kind of parameters and any kind of criteria that you'd like. Um, you know, then then we went and you know we took those the simple signals that we had and we we put some filters on them, and um, you know, lastly we showed you how you can auto trade that system uh, fully uh, or even semi automated if you'd like. Um, you know, and we also back tested it as well. So, 
So that's basically what I had for today. Oh. And um and 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 so uh uh I guess uh, you know I guess well since I sort of spilled the beans there, I didn't really intend to be perfectly honest to uh to actually have a uh um a twenty percent sale, but but I guess since uh <laughs> since it's already there and, and uh, um, uh, those of you that were quick enough to catch it, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to hop with this. So we'll, we'll honor it because we, we just we, we actually um, we uh, came off a uh, uh, a, uh, a sort of a huge Ninja Trader promotion last week, and uh, you know part of that was uh, this is sort of our first year of uh, operations that we're tying up, and and actually this coupon code what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to create a new one called Trading Pub. Okay, so so please do ignore this one. Um, in fact, I'll just uh, maybe if there's uh, Morgan, if there's a way to thank you. Actually, well, why don't we change that there? Change the coupon code to Trading Pub um, because the, this this particular one has expired actually um, because uh, that was um, that was actually last week. So uh, so as soon as this is all done, I'll put that in there. Um, just as just as kind of a you know again we're just coming off our first year anniversary here and uh we'll, ex we'll extend that uh, sale to you guys um and that will we'll be good for a week but basically you know you know where you where you can get take advantage of that is if you go to bloodhound and you go to buy now uh just you know, when you select a product and whatnot so we do have three versions and of just kind of varying features uh the one i was demoing and uh, when you hit the add to cart button, uh, you'll see that there's a. This is kind of where I guess some people miss it, but this is this is the where you add the coupon. It's just this little link just in the uh, uh, just in the cart there, or not? This is before the cart, and this is where you put Trading Pub. Okay, so I don't think it, I've got mine set up yet. Yeah, so so I will actually go in and activate that right after this uh, presentation is done. Um, but that's where you would put it in. Okay. Okay, so so that's basically all I have. So Morgan, if if you want to sort of take over there and wrap up, um, I'm you know very grateful that you guys uh, stuck around and, and had and listened to what I said, um, you know, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, this this is something that you can add to your trading repertoire and and uh, you know again the whole the whole point of, of us building this tool is to to empower you guys to uh, to build great trading systems and and become successful. All right, everyone. Well, we appreciate you guys being here for sure. Uh, look forward to having you at our next event. And um, again, check out the link at sharkindicators.com. I posted it in there. Use the coupon code TRADINGPUB, and uh, you get a nice little discount there. Uh, but again, Jeremy, great job. We look forward to having you uh, back very soon. And again, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Yes, we did record, and we'll get a copy of the recording posted on our website and emailed out to you uh, tomorrow. All right, thanks, everyone.